Gotta get that protein, bro. Okay, so sorry about that. Just had to live out that gym rat stereotype that forever haunts me. Welcome back to Lightning Health. Today we are talking about protein, a topic usually reserved for muscle bros, but we are taking back the narrative because everyone needs to know about this. Regardless of your goals, you wanna get bigger, you wanna get smaller. Everyone needs protein. Now, I'm not a nutritionist, but like I've said, it's so important to me that the information I'm presenting to you is clear and factually correct. So I asked my friend Megan, who's a nutritional therapist, to fact check my work. And she gave me her gold stamp of approval. Megan does online nutrition coaching. So if you are interested, you can check her out on Instagram. Remember back to our lesson on carbs? Today we are talking all about carbs. We talked about how carbs are broken down into sugar, which triggers the release of insulin, which can potentially cause a whole bunch of problems with glucose being stored as fat and us wanting to eat a whole bunch of bad foods. Yeah. Protein doesn't really do that. When we eat protein, it's broken down into amino acids, which are like the building blocks of all of the cells in your body. They're responsible for not only building and repairing your muscles, but tons of other processes with hormones and your immune system. Protein is satiated. It does an amazing job of keeping us full for longer and doesn't send your blood sugar skyrocketing. The foods that are gonna give us the biggest bang for our buck to efficiently get protein are animal products. Beef, chicken, fish, eggs, they're all super high in protein. This isn't to say that we can't get our protein from plant products. We absolutely can. But we just have to be a little bit more careful because nuts and seeds have protein, but they're also super high in fat. Beans and legumes have protein, but they're also high in carbs. Protein is gonna differ from plant sources to animal sources. Remember those amino acids we were talking about? There are 20 of these, and our bodies can make 11 of them. I know, amazing. A nice little factory in there. But that means we have to get the other nine from outside sources to make sure that our bodies have the building blocks that they need. The good news is that animal products, like meat and dairy, have all nine of those amino acids. The bad news is that proteins from plants don't. So I generally suggest to people who are vegetarian or vegan to make sure that they're eating a wide array of vegetables that complement each other or you can supplement some of your protein needs with a vegan protein powder that has that full amino acid profile. Ah, what a nice segue into supplementing protein. I get asked all the time about protein powders. And one thing we have to keep in mind before supplementing protein is how much protein you're getting on the average day. Y'all, there are some wild guidelines when it comes to protein. The research for this is all over the place, but recommendations vary from 0.5 grams to 1.5 grams of protein per pound of body weight. The good thing is that we have a pretty large margin for error here. When we eat an excess of carbs, those carbs can be stored as fat. And luckily, that's not nearly as much the case for protein. Again, I don't wanna to get too granular here because I don't really believe in counting macros. Counting them just isn't the way to go. But it can be a helpful tool to count for a few days just so you can get an idea of how much of each macro you are eating per day on average. If you decide to do this, I would suggest aiming for around 0.75 grams of protein per pound of body weight. Sometimes we see people bumping this number up, especially if they're super active at the gym. But I think of this number as a constant for losing and gaining weight. This means as a 160 pound individual, I'm looking for about 120 grams of protein per day to ensure healthy functioning and muscle growth and recovery. My weight loss or gain won't be super dependent upon the 120 grams of protein it's dependent upon the carbs and fats that I'm eating. Okay, so that was a super long-winded explanation of should we supplement our protein? And the answer is not if you don't have to. If you can get that 0.75 grams of protein per pound of body weight by eating whole foods, there absolutely isn't a benefit to you putting more processed food into your body. On the other hand, it's not always super easy to get that much protein. So clean protein powders can be an amazing way to reach that goal. I personally have a scoop of protein powder in my smoothie every morning because it gives me a little more room to play around with eating less meat for environmental purposes and to cut down on my grocery costs. When I'm looking at protein powders, I'm usually looking at three things. One, how many ingredients does it have? Because less is definitely more here. Number two, what kind of protein is it? Whey, brown rice, soy, pea, because these proteins will affect you differently from a gut and amino acid standpoint. And number three, does it taste good? Are you gonna eat it? Or are you gonna shove it to the back of the pantry? Because 
protein powder is f***ing expensive. I want you to be aware of a big lie from the supplement industry. We've been told that there's a magic window that you have to drink your protein shake in order for it to take effect. To some extent, I was made to feel like my workout was worthless if I didn't take a protein shake in that magic post-workout hour. And I just want you to know, this isn't true. Really quick, just think for a second how a supplement company could ensure that you're going to use their product every single day. Oh yeah, tell people that their workouts are pointless if they don't supplement. I've worked with protein companies that spout this nonsense and it's one of the biggest turnoffs. There is virtually no research to support this. But what I can tell you is that people have been exercising for hundreds of years without supplements and they did just fine. So I'm calling bullshit. Supplements are great because they're convenient and they can help you hit that daily protein goal. But the when isn't real. As long as you are getting that protein in every single day, the timing just isn't super important. And to all you intermittent fasters out there, it's the same thing, but we'll save that for another video. I just have one more point I want you to keep in mind in case you have any reservations about why protein is important. We gain lean muscle through exercise and protein. Yes, we want lean muscle because it looks good. But more importantly, we want it because it's efficient. The more lean muscle we have, the more calories we're gonna burn, not only when working out, but also in everyday tasks. So if that's not enough of a motivator to make sure that you are getting enough protein, I don't know what is. Thank you so much for watching. I can't tell you how much I've enjoyed working on these videos and I so appreciate all the amazing feedback that y'all have been giving. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and I will see you next time.